Hi, Christian. How are you? How are you? Very fine. Like, thank you for uh, joining me today. You're uh, welcome. Yeah, can you hear me all right? <laughs> yes, I can hear you all right. Yeah, you, yeah, you can hear me fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. Perfect. Um, if you want to just uh, dive straight into it then. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Christian, growing up, I believe your uh, boyhood club was Marseille. Are they still your team today, or does your career change any of your allegiances? <laughs> uh, you make me look like a traitor. Uh, you yeah, agent. <laughs> Has changed. Yeah, I, I still like the team. I still follow them sometimes, but um, I think since I became professional, I'm not really into uh, supporting those other teams. Yeah, so you then <laughs> tend to follow the the clubs that you played for, then. Yeah. Yeah. Being a Marseille fan, end up coming to the British football. What was your impression of English football before you arrived? Uh, I think around right about the time when Marseille would have been uh, at the top in the late 80s, it would have been Liverpool and Arsenal were the, the top dogs in English football. And by the time you arrive, it, it slightly altered between Arsenal and uh, Manchester United. Yeah, the, the time um, when I arrived, well, the difference, well, there was no much difference. The thing is, I was watching a lot of uh, I was watching the, the Premiership a lot. So um, I was more surprised because, you know, when you watch on TV, you think that you've got a lot of time with the ball and you can actually uh, think about what you're going to do and everything, but it's not, it's not like that. As soon as you've got the ball, I remember my, my coach at the time, Lirano, told me, as soon as you've got the ball, count three seconds and you will see someone's on you already, especially when you're a forward player. And it, it's what happened. So the player who managed to create um, spaces for themselves are very, very high, high player like Thierry Henry, but he, will, he wouldn't do the, the defensive work than some of the players, so it would be easier for him to create the, the space. And I think that, that the, when you watch the game on TV, that the impression is that you've got so much time with the ball, which is not. Mm -hmm. And so you talk about players like uh, Thierry Henry. Were you kind of in awe of uh, the Arsenal side back then being heavily French influenced? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, well, I mean, with the coach like Arsene Wenger, um, he had to be this way, you know. Um, everybody knows that the French uh, academy is one of the best in the world. So when he's got his already his, um, his connection, bringing French player would be easy for him. In your youth, I did some research and I discovered that you had offers from uh, the likes of Marseille, PSG, Bordeaux, and AC Milan. Would you like to tell us the story of, of this interest and uh, why a, a move never seemed to, to come about? Well, I know the thing is, um, AC Milan, it was, it, was, um, it was funny. What happened is they came to my house in France. I was playing for choice at the time. I wasn't professional. They wanted me as, um, because I wasn't professional, so they would get me for free. Um, so they came to my house from your contract, but they said, I need to be, I think it was some, something in November or something, but I need to be free in, when January come. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm happy. I want that. But you know, when you're 18 years old um, and you've got the pressure of your team who are on your back all the time, pressuring you for you to sign, it was difficult. So from November, I think it was something like that. November until January, I needed to be strong enough to tell my, my team, no, I'm not going to sign for you. And what they've done is they, they, um, they put me in a, in a, well, I was on my own. So after every training session, the coach will uh, ask me to come in his office. If he's not the coach, it's going to be the sport director. If it's not the sport director, it's going to be the chairman. I will always go into the office and pressure me to sign. And I always try to find an excuse. The excuse was, um, my, my mom is in Ivory Coast just now. I'm waiting for her to come back. When she's back, I will sign for you guys. <laughs> so every day they were putting me under pressure and they were treating me like a king, to be fair. Like um, when there were hard sessions, say, Christian, you don't need to run, just go on the side because they wanted me to feel happy here and sign, which I was happy. But my, my head was to be in Milan, in Milan. But you know, and I've made a mistake one day. They phoned me and said, Oh, Christian, uh, so what do you think? Uh, are you happy with your contract? And I said, Yes, I'm very happy, but I'm still, um, 
my mom's coming tomorrow. And say, oh, so your mom's there. Okay. And then uh, they say, okay, uh, bring, we make your mom come. And my mom came in and I said, mom, I don't want to. I want to send for, for AC Milan. And she said, you know what, Christian, you owe them that. They were with you when you were 15. They helped you to become the man that you are. And you owe them to sign for them. She's a Christian. <laughs> She's a Christian. <laughs> and I say, oh, my God. And my dad was like, not too happy. But I said, yeah, that's why, that's why I signed there. So was it more to do with your, your mom's influence then? Or did her words kind of get through to you? And you think, yeah, I kind of do owe them something back. For giving you the, the platform, of course. No, it's my mom. So I, of mom. course, I, I wasn't. Um, it was. It was. A, it wasn't bad, you know. It was the club helped me to become the man that I am. They, they, they've, um, they've got a great academy, and my friends there and everything. So no, it's not. It's not something bad. But now, if you ask me to choose, I would say I should have went to meet AC Milan. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've got the background as an AC Milan player, it will open so many doors for you. Even when you've got AC Milan on your CV, it changed everything, you know? Mm -hmm. so you can't play uh, the, with all my respect, right? You can't play for AC Milan, uh, even though you play five games or 10 games in the season, and the week after and, uh, the season finish, and then you see yourself signing for Ross County. Yeah. You understand? With all my respect with Ross County. Mm -hmm. But you might sign a team like Rangers or Celtic, despite you haven't played much. It's just because when you've got to think like this on your name, you open so many doors and usually big doors. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I think people have the same feeling in Scotland when it comes to the Rangers and Celtic. If you're in their youth academy, it opens doors in, in Scotland that will be willing to take that chance on you. Exactly. Uh -huh. So... The, the move to AC Milan doesn't go ahead. Uh, is it true that there were talks for you joining Bordeaux? I think I, I researched something about you being uh, given the prospect of having a partnership with Marwan Shamak. So what happened is when I've done, I, I, I had a good season with, uh, with Choice. I was end of my contract. Um, um, Asian for me and said, look, there's two clubs who might be interested. Says, um, what's his name? Um, oh, he used to play for Rangers. Striker used to play for Bordeaux. Um, oh, I forgot his name. He was so strong. Uh -huh. He was meant to sign for uh, I think Rangers. He was leaving. And this is they want, they want me to be the second striker just behind Shamak. It was Darcheville. So they uh, said, yeah. I've got the same kind of uh, games and Darcheville. So they wanted Darcheville. Darcheville was meant to go to Rangers. So I was meant to be the second striker behind Shamak. And there were also, I think Marseille was interested in, in a couple of other teams. And uh, my team offered me a big contract, was the biggest contract of the club at the time. I declined the contract because I had those uh, clubs who were interested. And two days after, uh, I've been told that those clubs are not interested in anymore. Just pulled away their interest? Yeah, no more interest. I told those clubs just step back. So, um, I went back to I went back to her, um, to my club and I told them that I accept the contract they signed me. Did you ever find out why the interest was was pulled out then? Seeing that that seems such a very bizarre change. So of the, heart. Agent, the agent told me and um, the club contacted contacted those clubs and spoke told them stuff about me. All right, so they they somewhat uh, sabotaged then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, it happens uh, often in football. Yeah. Uh, you, you have a nice time in France. It opens the door to sign for Sheffield United in the in the Premier League. We've just talked about your impression of English football before you went there. So tell me, when you first arrived at Sheffield United, uh, did did you find Neil Warnock an intimidating character? The first time I arrived in Sheffield, uh, just before I signed, it, 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 <laughs> I was in his office with my agent and uh, someone else. And obviously, I couldn't speak a word of English. Uh, but I remember what he said. He said, "Do you speak English?" Um, everybody, uh, I said, "No, really." And everybody laughed and everything. And he said, "Would you understand if I say move your f, f fat ass?" <laughs> and everybody started to laugh. But I didn't know what he meant, you know. And um, yeah, and 
it was more um, spending a year with him. It was more like um, a father for me. Oh, so you had a really good relationship with him then? Oh yeah, very good relationship yeah. with him. Yeah. So how did you she find was... him then, as as a coach? Oh, he's, he's the best coach I've ever worked with. Yeah, he's not the best tactically, but the way he's motivates his players, that I'm not surprised and he managed to bring so many teams from championship to premiership. Mm -hmm. Because the way he, he managed to, to fire up his players is just unbelievable. Yeah. And do you have any favourite uh, locker room stories with, with Warnock? Then? Any particular uh, halftime talks or anything like that that kind of sticks with you to this day? No, I just I, all I know is just he like to. Um, <laughs> sometimes you he, he will um, he will just uh, make fun of the players. Like, how did you manage to miss that? Honestly, even me, I would be able to score this. How did you manage to score? You know, stuff like that. Nothing, um, nothing crazy. He loves to scream, but it could be like screaming, and then two seconds after, speaking so nicely, he can oh. just go like this. But it's, it's, honestly, as soon as the game is finished, he'll be the first one to say, guys, let's have a pizza. Amazing coach, let's say. And that was regardless of the result, I assume. Doesn't matter. We are, I remember one day we, are, we went to London, we lost. Uh, we're on the way back on the on the bus. And, the, well, I'm not used to that in France. That's the way we do. And the bus stopped for I don't know how long I was listening to music. And then I saw him coming back with 20 boxes, pizza boxes to give to the players. And I was like, wow. He said before the game, it's not the game. After the game, it's not the game anymore. So it doesn't matter if you you lose, you can't cry, it's done. So just think about the next game. Yeah. The thing is because there's many players and I was like this, is when you lose the game, you know, you keep playing the game again and again and again and again for a few days. And that won't change anything. And sometimes, you know, like I played in England in 2006 and we we're in 2021 and they still seeing um, images and I keep playing back to my, playing in my head. Saying, if I would have done that and I would have scored that day, we wouldn't still be in premiership, mm -hmm. you know, and that doesn't help you. Yeah. So looking back then on your Sheffield United career, Christian, is it fair to say that the biggest highlight was your, um, your winning goal against Arsenal? Yeah, yeah, my, yeah, of course, of course. But I think my it's my favorite of of my career. It's my favorite time of my career. But just being in the first seventeen on the first game of the season for me was was a, a big, big, big achievement. You know, I was I came as a I think seven or eight striker in the team, and I managed to to um, to win the coach over after just the preseason, and I managed to be the fourth uh, striker of the team just uh, the day of the, the league start. And for me, that was a big, big achievement, and I managed to make the bench on the first on the first day of the season. So that was, uh, yeah, that was a big reward for me. And I'd, I'd seen a story regarding the Arsenal goal. Is it true that you didn't expect that you were going to play that day? And that you had a, a McDonald's just before the game had started. Yeah. 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 Did, did Neil Warnock ever find that out? No. 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 <laughs> I don't think he knows now, probably, but yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think I would play. No. Well, your time at Sheffield United then comes to an end. Uh, you move up the border to Scotland. How did your move to Hearts come about? It's Neil. It's Neil Warnock. Um, who pushed me to go there uh, because he was about to join uh, Crystal Palace and he said then uh, he wanted me to join with him in Crystal Palace in January, but I need some first team game time. And um, and he said, I should go to Hearts, sign a three-year deal. And then as soon as he gets uh, the, the job, he will buy me from them. And uh, that's what he's done. He, he, he made an offer and I was meant to uh, to join him. Join him but, um, the owner at the time didn't let me go. Oh, so they knocked back the offer then? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, three times. Yeah, was that quite a was that quite a crazy period at the, the club's time then? I'm not 
awfully knowledgeable when it comes to Hearts, but I, I feel like I've heard of the some Romanov stories in the past before. It was it, it was unique. It was unique. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you will see in uh, in many football clubs. It will impose some player to play. Influence is when you influence someone. You see when you give the choice to the person, you know. But it's not influence. It's telling you. All uh -huh. oh, right. So he's commanding. Then he was demanding it. If he's not playing, you'll be out of your job. Oh wow. <laughs> and you obviously you got a lot of grief from uh, from the Hibs fans when it came to the the Edinburgh derbies. I had a little look at your record, and I think you've scored against Hibs more than any other uh, team in your career. So do you feel there's a bit of a, a justice to that? Yeah, like I said in a few interviews, they give me the motivation, you know, when someone hates you, hates you, all you want sometimes is just to, to give them payback, and that's the only way I could do. I wish I had this, uh, this uh, fire up, like, against every team, but against them, I just needed to prove something. So you felt really amped up every game against them, even regardless of whether it was at Hearts or not? Yeah, I just, because they didn't care if I was playing for Hearts or I was playing for Dumbarton, they would still give me the, the same grief. So my only answer was to score. So is that the highlight of your Hearts career then? Is it, is it scoring in the Edinburgh Derby? Uh, no, I, no. Yeah, maybe yes, my first goal, yeah. It was, it was actually a great feeling and, and I... Um, I still remember exactly how it happened, and yeah, I loved it. I loved the, the way the fans came uh, to, um, towards the pitch, and uh, and the players celebrating. Yeah, it was it was a great feeling. Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you not used to play as a secondary striker before you came to Scotland? Yes, I was playing for uh, when I was uh, uh, even a heart, or uh, even in front. Um, uh, sorry, I was Sheffield or even in front. I was the second striker, so I was more the one running around the striker. But when I came here. I played in, I came in, um, I remember we came in, uh, I came in for playing for Hearts. We went in preseason in Lichenia and we were playing on the pitch. The pitch wasn't great. And every time I had the ball, the ball would just run away from me. My first touch was abysmal. <laughs> and you see, that's one of my best points, my first touch. And it was abysmal. And the coach said, okay, what we're going to do, try to play back on the goal and try to hold the ball. So all I needed to do was to control the defender and he said, oh, that's quite good what you're doing. You can play uh, um, target man, which I never played before, and I didn't even know what it was. And that's when I started to play this position, and I started to get kicks a lot. And um, and I needed to change my body, my shape, my body shape, and I became stronger and stronger. And and I lost the uh, no, not too much, but I guess I lost some of the speed, and I had, I lost my um, because I was quite a technical player. I lost a lot of uh, technique because you don't practice anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I had to change the way I was. Do you think that move, being a target man, do you think that brought the best out of you? No, 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 no. Oh. Because until now, when, I'm, 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 when I was playing, I would try to come towards the ball and try to touch the ball as much as I can. And I'm, I'm, I was the kind of the player who even can say this. I'm the kind of player who need to touch the ball often to... Um, to feel comfortable and to be confident. And when I don't touch the ball, it's quite difficult. And when you're target man, you don't really touch the ball in your feet. It's more, you know, mm -hmm. um, win the ball in the hair, being strong, and, and that's it. So is it safe to say then that you would have preferred playing up front with another striker um, as opposed to playing on your own? Yes, of course. For example, it's, it's, when I was at Dundee, I was playing with uh, Peter McDonald was up front. Yeah. He couldn't do he couldn't run too much, and I, but he was there. So the things that he would do when he was staying between the two striker, uh, the two centre back, he gave me the option to come back and get the ball in my feet, so I could turn and face the goal. And that's what I, I wanted. So does Peter McDonald rank quite high then, uh, and amongst strike partners you've had in your career, since you've seemed to highlight him immediately? Yeah, of course, because he he removes so much pressure than I don't on me because. Everywhere I've been, the people will say, okay, that's that the coach in my team. Christian is in the team. We know he's going to attract two players. So I feel the two center back is on me. I feel already the pressure to, of the two center back. But when I've got another striker with me, the pressure is not on me anymore. And because he was playing in higher, uh, higher on the pitch than me, I was almost free and he would get those two strikers. 
the two center back, sorry. And that was much, much better for me. And that's why I rate him very, very highly. So for you, that makes the perfect partnership then is when they kind of read the kind of player you're like and they're willing to to kind of drag that pressure off you know, allow you allow you to thrive. Yes, yes. And it gave me the confidence. Like I, said, I needed to touch the ball. And that gave me the freedom to, uh, to to touch the ball, but also the confidence because I touched the ball more and more and more. And yes, and just I feel like happy again to, to, to be able to do things. And you know, when you... When you're confident, you run more. You're less tired because you enjoy what you do. Now we'll get we'll get onto your uh, your Dundee spell in just a moment. I, I want to ask um, just about when when you leave Hearts, you went to I think it was Cyprus and Thailand. Does how did yeah. these moves come about? Quite exotic <laughs> locations to to move to for football. Yeah, it was um, it was it was different. It was different. Um, it wasn't the the the, the how you say the, the trajectory that I should have. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, how it happened? I was meant to sign in Denmark. Something up, something happened, and it didn't happen. And I was in London uh, for a couple of months. An agent phoned me and said, "And there's a team in Cyprus who who be interested to have you on board." I said, "Okay." He sent me the contract. I signed, and I flew in Austria because they want president in Austria. Mm-hmm. It didn't really work out because I wasn't. Um, I was injured a lot when I was there, and also for me it was it was very difficult over there. Um, then uh, my, they stopped my contract in January, and uh, and then I went to to few few countries didn't work out, and someone for me and said I've got something for you in in in, uh, in Thailand. Would you want to go there? I said yes. I was about to stop, so yeah, but yes, I'm gonna give you a last shot. And I went there, and it went well, and so I stayed there two and a half years. Was the standard of football in Cyprus and Thailand better than you'd expect? Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I wasn't expecting that yet. It was very, very it, like I, there's a lot of Brazilian players and also and Argentinian, and so there's yeah, there's a lot of players from South America. So it's quite technical. Mm-hmm. It's quite. Technical, yeah. And moving to Thailand was that a bit of a culture shock being on the because it's almost like a whole different world over there on that side of Asia. Yeah, of course, of course. It's, it's nothing that I, and I, and I knew, so it was it was quite difficult at first, but with the heat as well. It's the heat is just so, so, it's very, very hot over there. But once again, the, 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 the level was quite good. The only thing is the, the player, the managing wasn't the right way. They were managing the. They wasn't managing the players the right way, so the tempo would be good for maybe twenty minutes. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, forty-five minutes, fifty minutes, and then you see you feel the big, big drop, and now you will see all the foreigners start to grow into the game, mm-hmm. because, like for example, the first forty minutes, fifty minutes, you will see like all the type players running like crazy, they will run fast, they were everything, and then when it dropped because they are tired. That's when you see the foreigner started to play the things that they learned, they learned, uh, uh, back home, you know, so tactically, technically, and you see that, and you start to see the difference. And that's why as they like to have, uh, uh, because you're asking you're allowed only five foreigners by team, so they would take just strikers or defender to be able to deal with the drop of the pace. Uh, really, really interesting insight there, then. I would never have expected an answer uh, quite like that. Um, I think I'm, I think like most people, I would say I'm a bit. Um, I don't think ignorance the correct word, but very short sighted to football in Asia. I've never really had a reason to bat an eye. The thing I, I was the same, you know. When I, you think that the football is only in Europe, you know, you don't see anything else. You only see okay, big league, Spain, um, England, Germany, France, Italy. You don't see. Um, then there's other leagues and there's other there's other country and honestly it quite it could be very very good, very very good. Like there's a player who used to play in France, uh, he played for Mar- Marseille, very very good player. He was playing for the French national team. He stopped his contract. He played in Mexico, and he says that the level of the of the league there is better than in France. And who was that said that? I forgot the name of the striker. I forgot the name of the striker. He used to play for Marseille. I think he's the only French player playing in Mexico, so he's easy to find. But he's a stri- striker. He used to play for the French national team. 
well, you know, that does kind of take me by surprise. But then again, you think Mexico's a very footballing-based uh, nation over there compared to their, their neighbours anyway. It's because you don't see it, but you will see, for example, in, in Brazil, I'm sure the, the level of, of technique must be un unbelievable. Yeah. In Argentina, when you see those, those teams, when they play uh, the final, uh, I, I forgot the name, but you know when they play in the final, for example, against uh, Real Madrid, mm -hmm. of the Champions League final with all the things, you never see big score. It's going to be like 2-1, 3-2, yeah. it's always... So, would you imagine all the teams like this, you know? Uh, it's the, the World Club Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's very, very fair point. I think we're going to December 2014. Um, you, you signed for Dundee. You went on record as saying it was um, it was it was something special. Was it the, the break you needed at the time, Christian? To be honest, just before to sign up uh, for Dundee, I was about to stop football. Uh, I already gave up. I went to France. I was at home. Mm -hmm. And someone... Um, Someone for me called Alec Hamilton for me and says, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't stop, and I've got the talent and I can still play, and I need to come back. and And he told me that um, there is a team who want who want me on trial, and it was, that was Dundee. And I say I haven't played for a year almost because I had a knee surgery. I just che I checked Dundee at top of the league. I said, it's no chance I'm gonna make it. Maybe if I was fit, but I'm not. And I went on trial, and and he convinced me, and I came back, and I went on trial, and. And I remember we trained, and after every training session, my knee would just swell up. Like it was crazy. I, ne I never, like I've never trained for a year. I just come back from an injury, never touched the ball. My knee was completely destroyed. And I said, it's not gonna work. So after every training session, I would like take painkillers, painkillers, just to be able to deal with the pain. And, uh, but I I've done quite well. And the coach gave me a contract, but he said, oh, I want to do, a we had, a how you call this? We had a, a small test, fitness test. Mm -hmm. And and I was rubbish because obviously I couldn't keep on. And he, so he withdrew the offer and said, well, I want to see you in a game. So we done a friendly game. And I think I scored a goal after five minutes. And then I scored a goal two minutes after that. And then I give an assist, an assist and said, okay, we give you a contract. But I, was, I wasn't ready at all. So was there a lot of pressure then going into that game, thinking that you've got the opportunity to win a contract based on this on this friendly? Of course, of course, it was like you know when you like this, you start to there's every possibility you go into your head. Is does the player going to pass me the ball? Is the um, am I going to touch the ball? Am I going to do the right things? Um, and you know, and that day was just my day. Everything went for me. Safe to say that uh, everything happens for a reason then. Because after all, you talk about this knee injury. I think, was that not your obstacle in signing for East Fife the previous summer? I haven't signed for East Fife, but that's the reason why I came back in Scotland yet, yeah, because of my knee. And yes, yeah. I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. I know that everything happened for a reason because it's just too weird. It's just, the way the way I, I hurt my knee, I don't know how anybody can hurt the knee the way I did. Do you remember what it is you did to your knee? Like how, how it happened? Yes, oh, yes, it was crazy. I was alone. I just received the ball. Someone passed me the ball. I stopped the ball. And I oh, my knee. And that was me down. It's just the touch that, on the ball. Just like that. And it wasn't even the, to the ball that I touched the ball with. I controlled the ball with my right foot and it's my left leg. And it was like I'm playing with you and we pass the ball to each other. And I said, oh, my knee. That's what happened. So something that should be so minimal turned out to be such a major... I don't even know how you can be injured that way. <laughs> and another thing is I went to the doctor and the doctor in turn on to me, I've got nothing at all. Then I should be playing soon. But after a month, I couldn't walk. So I went to, I came back in Scotland to see a doctor and the doctor, we had an uh, X-ray and he said, if I don't get the surgery soon, I won't be able to play football ever again. Just for something, I don't, I don't understand how this happened. And then um, I had to break my contract. Well, they wanted me back. They wanted to do surgery. I, I declined. I said, I'm going to pay for my own surgery here, which I did. And, uh, and I said, I told them that I need seven months till I can play again. And uh, they wanted me back there. I said, I'm not going to be there for seven months doing nothing. So I'm going to stay here. And I would like to, to stop my contract, which I, and I did. Well, you said that when you came to Dundee, though, you didn't feel like you were ready because of the knee injury. 
obviously taking painkillers, playing the friendly game. I think Craig Beattie and Peter McDonald were both injured at the time when you signed. So yes. despite yeah, so despite this injury, were you sitting there thinking like, you know, I might not be ready, but I could still be jumping straight into the first team here? I was honestly because they were not ready. I was so so scared. I remember the first game I was seeing was uh, against Falkirk mm -hmm. away on the Astro, and I'm like, how oh, I'm gonna make this? And it was, and I think the coach sister to me after uh, 45 minutes or 50, because I could, I just couldn't. When I wasn't fit, and my knee was was killing me. Mm -hmm. So yes, I was, I wasn't in a good way to start. No, that was uh, John Brown would have been the manager that signed you then. Yeah. Yeah. How how did you find him then to begin with? If you come in unfit, uh, struggling, was he? Quite sympathetic to that, or was he a bit more? He never knew. He never knew. No, I never told anybody. They wouldn't have signed me. They knew, and I couldn't run. And then my knee was too sore, so I never told anybody. Oh, so you managed to go through the pain and keep it under the rug completely. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So, when you when you looked at Dundee top the league, was that what made the prospect of coming Dundee uh, attractive to you, or was it maybe just the the idea of returning to Scotland? No, like I said, the fact they were top of the league made it even harder for me to come back. Because I wanted to stop. But I said, no chance. I don't want to go and humiliate myself and play for a team where I'm top of the league. I can't run. I can't uh, bring something. So the only things I could bring to, to Dundee is just to make them lose their first place. You know, they're already top of the league. They can't go higher than top of the league. So if I come and it doesn't work and they turn second, it's going to be only because of me, because I will be the only added pieces to the team. So I had this extra pressure. So no, it, it was just to come back to football. And and because he went, uh, the, the coach, I remember he came to me and said, Christian, I don't need you to run everywhere. I don't need you to do those runs. I only need you to be in the box. Your presence in the box will be enough for us. So I just need you to be in the box. And that's when I felt like, he don't expect me to come and hold the ball and run there and do those runs. He just want me in the box. And he make I felt so, so much better after he spoke to me. So when you when you joined that Dundee team as well, as we said, top the league, it obviously goes on to win the championship title. Um, how did you how did you find the team both in, on a playing level and in terms of the togetherness of the group? Did, could you tell right away that it, it was a potential title winning team? Well, we're at top of the league, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Honestly, I, the way we were playing, we were strong everywhere. We were strong in defense, quite easy actually in defense. Our midfielder was like dogs; they could run forever. And we knew. And uh, when you've got a striker like Peter McDonald and Craig BT, when he's fit, who can run, you can score from nothing. You, you've got a big shot there. Well, I've actually got both shirts you would have played in in uh, your Dundee career, Christian, right behind me on the, the two mannequins. <laughs> League winning campaign. Uh, do you have a favourite shirt between the two? I like the dark one. Dark one? Yeah. Home gets your favourite over the, the light one? Yeah, I prefer the dark one, yeah. But is that a uh, shirt? Was one we played that year? Yeah, this was the championship winning shirt. Okay. Yeah, but I prefer this one definitely, yeah. I would like to go on a bit of a breakdown for the, the last three games of the season. Uh, myself being a, a Dundee fan, I can remember the, the roller coaster. Uh, that, that followed. Um, there was Morton away. Greenock Morton at this point had already been uh, relegated. And the Dougie Emery goal saw Morton win the game 1-0. Uh, and with two games left to go, Hamilton were top the league. Yeah. So, do, do you remember that well? Do you remember thinking that perhaps, you know, because it's out of our hands, that uh, the chance was gone, it was blown? Or what was the what was the mood in the camp? No, I remember I was in the... I was in the when we were playing Morton, and we, I was on the bench, and I told people, why are you worrying? We're going to, we're going to win the league. And they were like, come on, uh, Dumba, Hamilton, and you can ask any player on the bench, and we'll tell you the same thing. They say, uh, Hamilton is first of the league. No way is they gonna is they gonna um, give us the, the league. I said, I'm telling you, we're going to win the league. There's no way we can lose it. Even with Singen, we win the league. And they said, no, no, no. <laughs> I remember because it's um, the Karen, which was the... The physio say, Christian, you must be a witch doctor. And I say, I'm not a witch doctor. I'm telling you, we're going to win the league. And we ended up winning the league. I see you right but, then. 
Yeah, I just I just knew it. I actually just knew it. Was that so the mood in the camp then after that defeat? Did they feel it was blown and you were the one that just had the belief that it was just bound to happen? I don't know if it was blown, but for me, I did, I didn't have any doubt and we we'll win the league. Uh-huh. I knew some people were thinking, oh, it's gonna be difficult. I mean, but I said to my, from, I told them, don't even worry. And I remember I used to come in training and and laugh and say, why are you so happy? I said, I know we're gonna win the league. Just relax. So we're going to the second last game of the season, uh, away to Aloha. You scored the opening goal that day, but you weren't able to celebrate. If, if memory serves correct, you actually were injured from a collision of heads. So yeah. do, do you remember it fine well, or was it too big of a knock in the head? No, no, no. At the time, I couldn't remember. I just remember the ball, because I remember then Peter uh, Pizzo was saying, then he's the one scoring, and I said, look, man, just go away. I scored the goal. Uh, but yes, I think, I don't know who kicked me. I don't know if the goalkeeper or someone, hit, I don't remember exactly. I just remember scoring and uh, being on the floor. Mm-hmm. That's all. And then, uh, and I think we won 3-1, that game, or 3-0. 3-0, yeah. Um, I think the, the uh, cross, and I headed the ball, and it touched the hand of a centre-back, and there was a penalty. And uh, Craig Beatty scored the penalty. Yeah. I think it was Peter McDonald scored the penalty, and then yeah. Craig Beatty finished finished the game off with uh, a third goal. Mm-hmm. And the game against Dumbarton, what was the build up for that game like? Then did did you guys anticipate such a, a mass crowd for a for a season finale? Yeah, of course, because the police came in the dressing room and told us, and if we score, we can't celebrate with the fans. We need to stay onto the pitch. Um, I remember when we went for the warm-up, nobody was talking. Usually everybody's laughing, nobody was talking. You could feel the pressure. And I told the players, hey guys, it's just a game. Just relax, you're going to win, just have fun, just laugh. And I started to laugh. And, and the, the, the um, what's his name? Tom Ritchie said, Christian, shut up. We have everybody's, everybody's concentrated and everybody's focused. See, stop with your focus, just have fun. If you play with, if you go with so much pressure, we weren't gonna make it, so just have fun, guys. And every, I think we played amazingly. It was a cup final scenario, really. It had to be a, a must-win game to ensure the the title. And we know that in hindsight, anyway, because uh, Hamilton had their colossal victory against uh, Morton. But you know, we go into the game. There's an early lead. Uh, you score a header. Wild celebrations. Uh, we go into halftime with a comfortable lead because Pete McDonald scores the second. The, the second half wasn't so smooth sailing, though, as it should have been. So do you remember feeling any pressure in that sec- second half? What I'm trying to say is, what, do you know about the Hamilton result after you came off? Or did you feel the pressure on the pitch, knowing the Hamilton result? So what happened is, I had this thing with Craig Beatty. So I wanted Craig Beatty to play. So a few times when I was playing, I would pretend to be tired so Craig Beatty could play. So when we were winning, and I said, OK, we've got the game, I'm going to let Craig Beatty play. So I came off the pitch and then I realized and they are trashing, trashing uh, Hamilton. And I was like, oh, that's going to be tough. Mm-hmm. But we managed to, uh, to win. But yes, the pressure in second half was, was crazy. Yeah, what's your memories then of that header scoring the wild celebrations? Where, I want to know, where does that goal rank from the goals you've scored in your career? Best goal. I told them, yes, um, um, the goal against Arsenal was amazing. It's a big team. And, but this is uh, something like I can't describe. The, the, the joys that I managed to, to give to other people and to me and my teammates, it was just amazing. And actually, I don't even know why I run towards the bench. <laughs> <laughs> just maybe because unconsciously, I know the police told us not to do it, to go to the fan. But if you ask me today to do the same, I will run towards the fan. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will run <laughs> into the stand, 100%. Yeah, you had quite a special relationship uh, with the fans. Uh, you've went on record as saying that you've never felt anything like this before, that you love, you love the fans, the pitch, and just being at Dundee. Is it fair to say that you, you somewhat fell in love with the club? Oh, yeah, 100%. I, ne- I felt so good over there. I was happy. I felt the love from the fans, and I, I'm sure they felt the love uh, that I could give as well. Um, yes, I, I was happy there. I was actually about to to move there. You're getting ready to move properly? Dundee, yeah. Yeah. 
and lifting the championship trophy on that final day against Dumbarton. In your, in your career, how high does that rank? Oh, top. That's the top? My, the only league that I won, so yes, of course, I'm top, yeah. Sure, very proud of that uh, <laughs> achievement, no doubt. Yes, you know, you, you, pro- you are, you're part of something, I'm part of, of the history, so yes, of course, I'm happy. Well, I know the fans would have been very keen for you to stay. Yourself would have been keen to say, ultimately, um, the decision was made. It wasn't made by me. It wasn't made by you, no. I don't know why to a city hall and I saw the, the, um, the fitness coach and I saw something on his face. Like, he wasn't the way he used to be towards me. And I'm like, is that something wrong? He said, no, no, nothing wrong, Christian. Just go. And I felt something. So we done the city hall and everything, but this keep playing in my head, in my head the way it was. And when we came back, and then when the coach told me, I was like, wow. And when I went back to, uh, to the car with the boys, uh, Benedict said, oh, Christian, you've been offered, I'm sure you've been offered a big contract. You must be so happy. I said, I'm released. He said, no, Christian, stop, stop pretending. You know, I'm being serious. I've been released. He said, everybody can be released, but you, I said, I'm telling you, I've been released. Uh, looking back on leaving Dundee, do you see it more as a positive than a negative now? Like, do you feel happy that, all right, well, you left playing your part, leaving a legacy, playing a part in a, uh, a crucial point in the club's history? Or do you look at it a bit still, a bit better that I couldn't go on longer than it did? No, of course I, I, I was better. Of course, because, you know, I, I, I felt like I didn't finish what I started. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we won the league, but after, you know, the, the thing is, is confirm what you achieved the season before. So going in Premiership and just stay up. And, and obviously, everybody wants to play in Premiership. So, yes, of course, I was, I was gutted because I, I actually gave everything I had. I gave my soul. Like, after, and you can as any player, before every training session, I was in the gym just to, to get, and after training session as well, mm-hmm. every day, just because I wanted to, uh, to, to get better for the team, for the club, for the fans, for the players, and, and be Taking this this um, opportunity for me, it was quite it was difficult, and I'm not gonna lie. At some point, I said, if that's football, I want to stop again because I gave my 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 whole, and it's not enough. I want I I loved hearts, and I love playing for hearts. But the thing I felt in Dundee was something different, and I wish I could have played much longer than this. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you touched up on the the whole gym scene because I do have a question in regards to that. Um, Because you come across as a very physical player, you know, you surely must have balanced the the gym work with the training. Uh, So how how exactly did you manage to balance, you know, the the gym and training at the same time? All I tried to do was try to, uh, even though I didn't have much, I just tried to say it, um, reduce the body fat, and be actually uh, work on the um, on my speed, so I just needed to work on my low my low body. So um, obviously I had the surgery with my knee, so I needed to stretch my my leg and uh, also uh, work on my abs, mm-hmm. so I could be much much faster. And <laughs> I've got two small things about this: is the player in the team never thought I was fast until we play against Morton. Uh, so again, we lost against Morton. They didn't know I was fast before that. And they said, yeah, they said, oh, we didn't know you were that fast. I said, because usually I don't need to, to sprint. You put me, you ask me to stay in the box, so I'm in the box, I don't need to sprint. And um, and they say, okay, so the fastest player in the team now, it's, um, what is, I forgot his name, playing for Ibs now. Um, help me, please. Playing for Hibs, uh, Martin Boyle. Yeah, Martin Boyle. Yeah was the fastest player, and then after him was me. Oh, wow. We, yeah, which uh, when we first, uh, first arrived, they say I was one towards the last, but because I never saw me sprint. Was it, was it quite, was his talent quite glaring at the time? He was a good player, but not like you could see it and you had potential, you see how fast he was, but he wasn't using it in the right way. And I think moving him for, to, to Ibernian was the best thing he's done. And now they, they help him to use his, uh, his speed and not just uh, be a, a chicken with no head, mm-hmm. but just actually know how to use his speed and, and be the profit of the team. And now, honestly, look the players and he became. Uh, another teammate I'd like to ask you about was uh, Gavin Ray. How did it feel to play alongside 
a guy like him. I like to pick your brains on because you know this was a guy that played at a very, very high level, very much affiliated with Dundee, and he of course was the captain for the championship winning campaign. Is you could feel like his his aura on the pitch when he was there. Yeah. When players start to panic, like the last game, players start to panic. He'll be the one just calm everybody down, guys. Just relax. Let's play. He was yeah, so, like you could. It's like um, you playing with your father. You sc- uh, you sc- I was scared of him, despite he was very respectable, uh, very nice guy. You know, when he's looking at you angry, you just like oh, okay, <laughs> you know, and that's why I feel like so much respect over the guy. It's not going to be amazing, but it's not going to be bad. Mm-hmm. It's going to be always the same. So that's kind of players and you need in your team. Always going to be, the, it's just always going to be the, the, a good performance. Mm-hmm. Not an amazing one, not a bad one. The performance and you need the, the full season. You've got a player like him, you know you're going to achieve something. Yeah, very consistent performer. Yeah. At the time, there was a couple of youngsters coming through into the scene, uh, Cami Kerr and Craig Whiten. Uh, Craig Whiten at this point, there was a lot of hype about him in the media. Could you see that there was something with these two that could spur them on? I don't know. The only thing I think with, with him is, with Whiten is the club should have kept him longer because he left too early. He left and he didn't leave. He left for a big, big club. And because he left, he left for a big, big club, the aspect Asian people were waiting was just too much for him. He's a good player, but he needed to develop. He said to, and in turn, he was the best place because he was at home. So people knew him. They knew what he was capable of. So mm-hmm. even if sometimes he had an off day, we know then the player he is. And he is, he's, um, he's learning from that. But when you play for a team like Hearts, you have to deliver. Doesn't matter. You need to deliver. Good day, bad day, we don't care. You need to deliver. But when you're a young boy, it's too much pressure. Mm-hmm. And I think he, he, if he would have stayed in Dundee two more years, three more years, he would have been able to develop. And now he's becoming a, a key player because he would have started so young, becoming a key player. And then going somewhere else, he wouldn't be surprised. But the thing is, the question is, you need to ask, why is, is you think, I think, he's done so well for hard to last, when he was hard, as hard for the last few months, mm-hmm. but they still let him go. Yeah. Why? Do you understand? Yeah, so there's some, sometimes you the scene, then we can't understand, we don't see because we are not there. But it's weird because when I could see for him, from him play, I, see, I could see goals. He was going like, I think it's called brace. And, uh, it's called, uh, he was going like regularly. And then I saw him, he's going to turn from line. And I said, how can they ask him to, why, why did he go? Uh, but do you still follow the, the club's results? Yeah. 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 I follow every... <laughs> Every team that I played for. Well, I was going to get off to the fact that uh, three of your former teams on the same uh, promotion push, you're kind of obviously split on who to root for, just want them all to do well, I suppose. There's um, there's Hamilton uh, fans contacted me and asked me to to send a video to, for the players um, to show them I'm with them and, and for the fans and everything. I, say, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't. Because I play for Hamilton, but I also play for Dundee and I play for Race Rovers. So I can't. I can't do that. I had a great time in three clubs and had three different relationships with those three clubs and, and I can't do that. I wish the best team won, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dundee making the playoff final. At the time of this recording, Dundee have just managed to see off uh, Wraith Rovers over the two legs of the playoff semi-final. Um, do you, in your opinion, do you think Dundee have got what it takes to to get over the, the, the finishing line and push over Kilmarnock to win promotion? I think every team on their day can win, but every player needs to give their all. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's football. Tomorrow you play against Rangers and you can win, even though they never lost the full season. You know, it's, it's just the day who turn up, you or your, your brother. You know, mm-hmm. if you turn up and you're ready to give everything and, and your, your, your teammates are ready to give everything, anybody can beat anybody. But if you don't turn up, well. Hi, hypothetically, let's say Dundee um, do go up, hearts are up. Um, this is Wraith Rovers' first season back in the championship since uh, promotion from League One uh, last season. 
Would you consider them favourites then for a promotion push next season? No. No? Why would I? It's, it's football. I think the people would like to give uh, or their favourite. No, it's football. You don't know. You know, they can have a bad start and then come back from a bad start. Like Dundee had a yeah. really bad start. And then they managed to uh, think they finished second, yeah? So, yeah. And they, I would never told them they would finish second with the start uh, of the season they, they had. And they managed to come back. It's, it's, it's football, you know? And especially in championship, it's difficult. You play against part-time team, which play against players who are so hung, hungry and want to be um, in, in a full-time team. They will give everything. So that's why people crit was criticizing Dundee and Hart to lose against part-time team. But it's so hard to play against those teams. It's very, very hard. And especially the, the pressure and the fans, the clubs and the media put on those players because they expect them to win easy against those part-time team. It's just too much. And, and sometimes it's hard to, to, to just handle it. You know, and what you the, the fans, all they need to put in their head is we don't care about the way you play. We don't care about the way, but you need to win. That's all we expect you. We need to win. And if you don't win, we don't care. Get promoted. That's what we expect you. We are Dundee and we should be playing in Premiership. So I don't care how you're going to manage to do that. Get in Premiership. But the thing is, <laughs> Rest Rovers will say the same thing. Hearts, yeah. Hearts is the same thing. And you see there's a lot of Hearts fans who are not happy about the way they played. But <laughs> Hearts is in Premiership next season. So the job's done. Doesn't matter the way you manage to go up. You just need to go up. The part of your career where you signed for Wraith Rovers. I think you went on record as saying that when you're at Wraith Rovers, it was the fittest you'd ever felt. So surely this spell must have been up there with one of the best in your career. I mean, after all, I think you had it on an individual note, you had a very good season, and ultimately it was the launch pad that sent you back into the premiership to sign for Hamilton Academical. Yeah, I was I was very fit once again. I was in the gym all the time. I think I had something like eight percent body fat or seven. I was was very fit. I was um, I was physically fit. Mm -hmm. I wasn't fit right here, but and maybe that's why I was fit right because I was trying to forget everything I had in my head to uh, and compensate by being fit physically. And I, I felt that I felt yes, physically very very good. And uh, unfortunately, I think I had like a couple injury who uh, who made me lose the 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 target or the way I was playing or performing. Uh, but yeah, I, I still done enough to, uh, to manage to go back in Premiership. And were you still balancing this, this gym and training most days? I was training every day. I was, there was a gym as well when I was away. So, um, like I said, after, before training session, we'll be in the gym. After training session, sometimes we spend time in the gym. Uh, obviously, it wasn't too much because you don't want to get big. It's just like you manage to find the right balance to feel good, to not get injured. And uh, and that's what we've done, yeah. And that's what I've done. Fair to say that the highlight of your um, Wraith Rovers career was the uh, 9th of February 2015. Uh, you scored the winning goal at Ibrox to knock Rangers out of the Scottish Cup. Uh, Wraith Rovers hadn't won there since 1959. So it was a, it was a monumental result on the day. If uh, memory serves correct, it was the Ryan Conroy that scored the first. And then yeah, you understood. Yeah. yeah. And then I scored the second. <laughs> it was it was quite a, a, a shamble. But like I, I, I said before, the ball was running on the line and I saw it and I just printed to it. And I would have put everybody into the net that day. The ball, the defender, the play, the goalkeeper, my own uh, teammate. Everybody would have been on the way that day, would have been fin would have finished on the net. Now, just to compare this for a second, I might be totally blown away because it might, it might sound a bit stupid, but if we look at the, the goal you scored against Arsenal and then the goal against Rangers, is there comparisons to be made there just in the sense of it's, it's a giant killing that you can put your name on it? No, the thing is, when you score a goal, you score a goal. You, know, you don't think about like the immensity of the goal or anything mm -hmm. you just score a goal you're happy you scored you're happy the team win it's after when you think oh okay we just beat Arsenal we actually just beat Arsenal it's a big team we actually just beat Rangers so it's, it's not some it, and the thing is it's my, it was my first goal in England for mm -hmm. uh, so it was my first goal in league 
it's, it's something special for me. It was, I think, my first start as well. Or second start, maybe. It was, it was something big as well. So, no, you can't... I can't really compare the way I was feeling after the game. Toward the game, I feel the same in any goal. Yeah, I had, I had a feeling that the answer was going to be like that. I just had to ask, because I wanted to see the kind of gratitude... Um, that was there when Ray, because again, Wraith Rovers beating Rangers even now is quite a big concept, especially at Ibrox. And at the time, I can remember that being such a big result, especially being a, a, in a cup game too, because I think I think Wraith did all right against Rangers that season in the in the league. I think Wraith kind of held their own. It was a very uh, difficult season, and I think you would have scored at Easter Road as well and got a result there. You know, Wraith See, didn't finish in the playoffs that season, but they still show that they could hold their own. It was such a very exciting that, season with so much, so many bigger um, bigger fish. That the problem is uh, was, uh, that season is we played so well, we played so good games, we beat big teams, but we were not consistent. Mm -hmm. We could beat uh, Rangers, Ibrox, and the week after, you go and lose a, a Queen of the South. Yeah. And you see, like, what happened there? You don't, <laughs> just because it's, we are a good team, and I, honestly, from the back to the front, we are a very good team. We have a lot of young players with no too much experience. And and, and that's why I think Kildas were a good player. And look, they, they showed that most of the young players were there. Now they are big players. But at the time, it wasn't it wasn't that. But honestly, I don't think we played in any team that season who actually came and said it was easy against us. We gave the game to everybody. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we didn't score the, uh, when we should have, when we were on top, or uh, sometimes we, a mistake would have just caused the game, things like that. So when you finish up at Wraith Rovers, you've, you've got the move to, to Hamilton. So with the, um, with the return to the Premiership, there surely must have been such such a buzz then, because as you said, with, with Dundee, although there's a more of a personal note on not being able to finish what you started with the club specifically, but there was still this you know, this feeling of, you know, you're back in the top flight where you felt like you should have been anyway. And again, you were there obviously with Hearts as well and you've had to work really hard. You had your challenges. So did it feel really rewarding then to finally earn that move back in the back in the top flight? Yeah, of course, of course. But it was also not just for me, just also for the, the people who thought and I was finished and look, I went down and I managed to go back up and there's no many players who managed to do that and, and I'm one of them. And, and I was I was very, very happy. I remember when the preseason where I was doing so well. Uh, and uh, yes, I was I was happy there. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know if it's going to be your next question, but I'm going to just uh, talk about it. Um, I think, and I should have uh, more game times than I had. I think I deserve more. Um, I had five, five starts, I had uh, three goals and two assists, but I was always on the bench. And uh, and I couldn't understand that, and I was started to be very very frustrated. And and at some point I, I wanted to leave, and I and I spoke to the coach, and I said, look, I'm sorry, but I need to leave. I need to play. I want to play. I want to play. And he said, yes, but you, I, we need you here. We want you to stay. We don't want you to go. What you're doing here is is good, and we don't need, we don't want you to go for the things that you do with the young players because I was helping um what's his name uh some players uh, in the gym and stuff. And trying to motivate players, start to try to keep the, some players straight. So he said, "I've got a big influence in the team, and I don't want me to go." And he knows, and I can be frustrated for the game time, but he will come. And he knows, and I'm a hardworking man. So, uh, but I say, "Yes, I understand." But I, I want to play now. I need to play now, and I think I deserve to play. And then I don't get my chance, so I need to leave. Yeah. And he, he's been a, a real, real man because he came to me in my head and said, "Look." I respect your choice and shake my hand and said, uh, I wish you the best. So then the departure with, with Hamilton would obviously have been a, a result of that. Um, you found the move to Dumbarton after Hamilton. How, how did this move come around? Again, you, as you say, you, you've, you've done all right with Hamilton. I think at this point, Dumbarton were still in the, the championship. So did you feel that, with all respect to Dumbarton, did you feel it was still a bit of a step down considering that you've you've worked hard to get back in the top flight? You've done all right when you've had the opportunity to play, but you're not able to, to stick around? Oh, yeah, it was it was a step down. It was a step down, of course. Um, it was also a very... 
risk, big risk, and I was taking because I'm going from full time to part time in a team who are struggling uh, in championship. So if I, and I remember the, the coach, the Dumbarton coach at the time, being honest, he said, Christian, if you, we want you to sign, but we also know that if you sign for us and you don't do well, it's going to be over for you. So you have to do well. It's not even, mm-hmm. you need to perform. And I felt the pressure. I was like, why am I actually signing there? Because I could actually destroy my career. But I took the, I took the risk and, and it worked out, it worked out fine. Yeah, what was uh, what's your favorite memories then looking back on your spell at Dumbarton? Because it obviously must have left an impression on you because you end up returning there after signing for Stranraer. Uh no, I, I, I love being there. I was free. So coach wouldn't give me any 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 actually thing to say. He wouldn't even tell me anything, he would just say, go on the pitch and do what you can. Give your best. So he wouldn't tell me. Go defend this, defend that. Don't no, just go and when you've got the ball, try to make something happen. And that's what I tried to do. And was this because do you think that Dumbarton were used to playing at the, the lower level, or do you think it was you were getting treatment because you were seen as a more of a star player? I I think the coach was very, very uh, obviously it was very he was paying attention to me, he was really careful. Um, also not to get me injured and not to get me too tired because he knew then obviously when, before I arrived they were struggling mm-hmm. so I need to bring something different and when I did I'm sure I was thinking if I get injured or something it could go back to those uh, those times where they were struggling and maybe um, uh, struggle for the relegation so he was treating me very 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 good and uh, if I didn't want to train, I wouldn't train. And it, it was quite nice to be laughing all the time. Um, so, yeah, I was like a, a little star. So what, what caused you to leave Dumbarton the first time then before coming back? I, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, no idea. I was, uh, it was a mistake. Actually, actually, maybe it's because of challenges. Like... I knew then with Dumbarton, we wouldn't play for the title, we would play for relegation. We tried not to get relegated, sorry. Signing for Sandra would be trying to go back up, trying to go up, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that attract me was a challenge and I was, I was so I was ready to, to have. Yeah. I think Stronger actually had a good team around by that time. Yeah, I think they were always kind of trying to challenge to go into the championship. Yeah, I can they- recall that. We had a very good team. We just didn't perform good at all. We had a very, very good team. If you take, for example, the team we had at the time in League One, now I'm telling you, and we play all our best, we get promoted, no, no, no question. But we are not like even close to our best. That's all. I think uh, we're not, we're, we couldn't play together. There were a lot of egos in the team. And there were a lot of friends of a friend, and it was it was a big mess. Mm-hmm. And you obviously uh, returned to Dumbarton afterwards. Uh, how did the second spell compare to the first? It was different because, like I said, the first time the coach said, "Christian, go on the pitch, have fun, do what you can, you know, help us." And now it was more like, "We need you to defend." So the energy that I usually kept. To attack, now we spend a lot defending. Because obviously, when you play against teams, you defend a lot. So you be chasing, but when you've got the ball, you're not fresh enough to uh, to do what you need to be done or to sprint to ten sprint a, a game. And uh, it was quite different, but I still managed to score some goals, and we still managed to stay in a in a in championship. So after that second spell at Dumbarton, you're going to play for Troon and an Athletic and currently at uh, Anne Bank United. So again, sticking around about this kind of same same levels respectfully. Um, I'm quite curious to know, when we talk about your earlier career, we talk about um, the possibility of moving to a, a Crystal Palace in AC Milan. So was there any offers from Scottish clubs in around these leagues that you were very close to signing to and then end up 
not going or knocking the offer back? Like, for instance, Reese Fife ever trying to uh, persuade you to come well, back? Well, the, when this thing happened in, to my personal mm -hmm. life, uh, and I've been um, accused of something that I didn't do, a lot of people turned them back on me. I mean, it's not everybody turned their back on me. It could be like uh, chairman of clubs, coaches, fans, lots turned their back on me. And I found myself alone. So no team actually is, and I know of, in Scotland will be interested for me to be with them because of those accusations, you know? Mm -hmm. And the only sensible man, man actually, will be the, the true staff who contacted me and uh, told me that I'm not guilty until it's been proven. Yeah. They would like me to come and join the team, but obviously if at the end I've been proven guilty, they will have to let me go. Mm -hmm. And that's the only person um, who, who, who told me that, you know, and and that really, really touched me. Like I say, everybody turned their back on me and that's the only one who were there for me. Even some of my teammates who, who I was close to turned their back on me. Seriously? Yeah. And I, on the back of an accusation as well, so it's someone that would know you quite well, wouldn't even give you the, the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, just stop talking, yeah. I would talk, call them, text them, just ignore me, yeah. Wow. Right. So how do you how do you find then playing football at your, your current level? Well, I'm not playing. <laughs> oh, obviously, yeah. But before before the <laughs> pandemic, I should have I should have added. Yeah. No, it was it was it was good. It was just um, escaping again mm -hmm. uh, the mental prison I was in, uh, escaping the situation I was in, and uh, and I just I, I had a good time when I was playing because it was the only time where I was not thinking about personal things. And, and yes, and, and I had fun, yeah. Yeah. And then for other people that might be feeling uh, similar to you, Christian, is there any advice you'd like to pass, uh, pass on to them? Just talk. Just be able to talk. You just need to talk. It's nothing complicated and it can be hard, but you just need to be able to open yourself to someone. You just need to. Mm -hmm. But it's, I know it's, you need to, it's a big, big, big thing to do it. But once you do it, you know, then you are on the way to, uh, to hand this uh, constant prison that you're in your head. Mm -hmm. Well, I've just got one, one last final question for you, Christian. Uh, again, doing a bit more research. I was very surprised to see that there were some players that you played with I had absolutely zero idea. Um, at Troy's, you played with uh, Matt Tweedy. Um, yeah, bless. That used to be at uh, Juventus. Now it's uh, in, in Miami, I think, in the, the MLS. As, as, as well as uh, Diara at Le, Le Havre. Is that how it's pronounced? La Sena, La Sena Diara. Le Havre, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Le Havre. So see, with these guys, with these, with these players that when you played with at the time, you could see that they had a bright future ahead of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially last last night, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was so much. He knew. He like we are playing in in, in Le Havre, second division in France, and he was saying he wasn't even a starter, and he was saying, hm, "Guys, I'm going to play for Chelsea one day." You see, <laughs> I swear it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, you see, see, I don't care what the coach is doing. I don't care if I'm not playing. I'm telling you, I'll be playing for Chelsea one day. A year half and half after he was playing for Chelsea. Not even. Is he the best player you've played with in your career then, would you say? No. No. No, no, no. Patrice Evra is, must be up there. And would that have been France under 21s? Yes, Patrice yeah. Evra is at even Blaise is uh is up there. Mm -hmm. But is up there. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, yeah, Blaze. Blaze must be right up there. 
And actually, he's a very lucky, lucky man. He managed to make a career when he shouldn't even be there, honestly. It's, football is all about luck. Yeah. All about luck, yeah. He's a very, very lucky man. And do you have any ambitions to get into coaching? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just now I've got something happened in America uh, in July. So I'm going there. Um, and fortunately, I never passed my coach's badges. But yes, it could be something that I would like to do. I'm doing like one-on-one -on -one coaching at the moment. Um, I'm working with a, a football agent. So we're helping players to find clubs uh, uh, in England. So that's what I'm doing just now. You should, ah, I should have took my shave and everything. You should have shaved me. <laughs> uh, Christian, it's been a delight uh, having you on. Thank you very much for taking part in this. I greatly appreciate Thank it. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Sat on nicely for That's up towards Abua. Murray comes across. Real chance and they lead. They scored a goal. The drought is over and more importantly, Hearts lead at Hibs in the Scottish Cup. Well, Driver does brilliantly to pull it back from the byline. McAlambi totally committed. Thinks he can go and smother this. Stop it coming across goal. Look at the goalkeeper. Never getting there. And Rob Jones totally exposed almost in the goal line. Chance out of nothing. Great setup from Driver. And that is not going to miss from there. No, Macalambi.